Hello guys, welcome to the video, my name is Gabba and today I'm going to talk to you about the beta for Call of Duty Vanguard. Towards the end there's some footage of the Flame Knot, this is gameplay of 49 kills, only a few deaths thankfully. Not a bad streak in the middle there as well and I want to show you guys the kill streaks in action, how the game plays, mounting, features of the game which have been carried over from old games and new stuff as well. So let's get right into it, if you enjoyed the video of course drop a like and maybe subscribe for more. So let's get right into this right now. So let's start off with the good things and I'll finish with some bad things later on. But first of all, I am really enjoying how this is a pick up and play for anyone that's ever played Warzone. That's going to be a lot of you and anyone that's played Modern Warfare. You're really going to feel at home the sliding, jumping, mounting weapons, peeking around corners, opening doors. It all feels the same. It's pretty much an engine you're very familiar with, which could be argued as good and bad. I know that when Cold War came out, I felt this was great, it's new, but I did not enjoy it. I mean, it's one of those things that why if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But they tried to change it just to make it feel new. And I really was gutted that Cold War came out the way that it did. Thankfully, the engine feels so, so smooth. So familiar and uh, no complaints really in the movement. The mounting, opening doors, things like that. It'll all feel exactly the same for those that have played the Warzone. Just make sure you get a photograph of your settings for like ADS and your uh, sensitivity, vertical sensitivity, yada, yada, yada. Get a screenshot or photograph of that on your phone. Ready for when you play Vanguard because you're going to want them the same. So everything is muscle memory. Sniping is going to feel the same. ADS sensitivity is the same. All perfect. Really, really good. And that's one of the bonuses of playing a game where the engine is actually the same as a previous year. So the beta, thankfully, is based mostly around six versus six maps. General multiplayer away from the Vanguard sort of champion hill they released in the alpha last week. So now they're playing six versus six maps, which are generally quite large. And only one map so far. We're not loving but what I do love is the tactical pacing. While you're joining into a game, you get a chance to check out what this pace of the game is going to reflect, whether it be lots of enemies to play against or hardly a few, which is quite nice. It gives you a chance to change the pacing, whether you are going for certain camouflages or weapons, playing with a few friends or just playing on your own. Do you do better in a group or against loads of players? Of course, if you're playing with meta weapons, trying to level them up, get them gold, play against tons of players. But if you're trying to level a shotgun up, or maybe one of the LMGs that aren't so good, or maybe get a gold pistol. Why not slow it down and play six versus six? You can take your time and really explore the map. This really does give newer players chance to play the game and experience the map a little bit different. Really, really cool, great feature. The beta is introducing a new game mode called Patrol. If you've not seen it in the background, keep an eye on that blue circle or red is moving around just here. This is the patrol area. We want to stay in this as long as possible to win the game, but what a great thing this does to the actual map. There is hardly anyone camping in this game mode. I don't understand um, how it works in regards to why you don't want to camp, but not as many people are sitting still. They're actually all focused around this circle. They know they're going to get multi-kills by killing people on it. They know they're going to get extra score and XP by being on it. It's a really cool way to make players move. When you play TDM, that's of course a well-known game mode. Everyone sort of plays it and enjoys it. But I've noticed that while people are learning this game with lower weapons, sort of levels, they haven't got silencers and X, Y, Z, low level kill streaks, or whatever, they are playing slow. Understandably, this is a new game. They don't know what they are doing, where to go, what is the objective. People are sitting still, and I'm finding myself getting killed by campers quite a bit. Even though this sound in this game is purposely low, I think they've lowered it to make people want to rush more. Uh, it still feels like there are campers in TDM and of course um, kill confirmed but when it comes to domination the map design really does contribute to how domination plays there's a lot of three lane designs so far really enjoying the map so far in the background we have the hotel one hotel royale I believe it's called it's really based around three lanes down the middle around the sides yet again this has been a staple for call of duty and I'm very happy to see that a lot more three lane designs are coming back maybe not exactly three lanes but they have Based it loosely around that except for the red star map this is the snowy one not a big fan of that it really is a bit too open i think they need to address that open area but maybe it's just players taking it slow not understanding how the game works there's no uavs just yet they're a little bit timid to rush out into the open but so far map designs are absolutely spot on loving the feel of the maps i'm loving the breakable materials the walls can be damaged of course we do know about slamming our faces through walls even just destroying the walls in this uh sort of hotel area you may notice the green wall in the background there lots of damage to the wall really i mean loving that it's it feels alive really is cool the actual map in the middle of the jungle that has got a movable plate in the center the b flag actually rises up and down with the tank 
This map change is actually activated by players. So there's a button on the wall on top of the ship that will allow you to actually raise and lower a kind of plinth here. And this will let you actually change the map. This is quite cool because this is where the B flag is. Quite interesting, as you can see in the background. You raise it up, and of course, you die straight away. So moving on to kill streaks. These are pretty cool, actually. Uh, stepping away from the score streaks back into kill streaks. A lot of them are quite familiar. Intel is kind of like that personal radar for modern warfare. Only hangs around yourself for that life. As soon as you die, it goes away. It's pretty cool, but it does show off enemy gunfire, not enemy footsteps. It's enemy gunfire. That's the only way you'll see it. And the same with UAV. The UAV, I haven't actually unlocked it yet, but I know it only shows enemies that have not got Ghost on. But if you have Ghost, you have to be moving, which is quite interesting. Quite a big change in how Ghost is going to behave. Maybe that will change in Warzone soon. Doubtful. But other than the intelligence kind of support streaks, there are, of course, kill streaks such as miniguns. Uh, death, death Machine is cool. That's the what it's called. The Death Machine is one of the better ones you'd unlock. I know that in betas, they've had less kill streaks. They add them later. It was something they definitely did loads in Black Ops Cold War, adding a new kill streak in every season. I don't know why they did that. I'm not sure it made it. It, it. it meant they released an unfinished game, basically. But I hope that doesn't happen to Vanguard. I hope we get quite a lot of kill streaks to choose from at the beginning. But luckily, so far, there's a short amount of things to choose from. And on screen, you're going to be seeing in just a moment the uh, death machine. This is a minigun that shoots explosive rounds against walls near enemies. It's fairly weak when it hits the wall around them, but it's pretty much instant kill if it actually hits the body of the player. It's great for this game mode because you can actually see the patrol coming around the corner. You can kind of plow them as they even see you. It's pretty much amazing. So these kills do not add to more streaks. You cannot get a nuke with these, uh, which is a shame because I think in this gameplay, I'll have to do some maths how many kills I actually get with both these kill streaks put together because in a moment's time, you're going to see the new Juggernaut, which is the Flame Knot. This, of course, has got a, instead of a minigun this time, you're going to have a flamethrower. The range on this thing is pretty good. It's actually like medium length range. I'd say it's like twice as far as a shotgun. It's pretty good, and it sets people alight, and they're going to slowly burn. And I haven't not killed a single person yet. Anyone who gets on fire does eventually die, although this is quite a cluster. What you see on screen is cluster-fired. No variance other than that. It is crazy, so I don't really keep track of how many kills you get, but... Hopefully you guys are going to use this one as well. You unlock the dogs at 10 kill streak, but at a 9 kill streak you get the flame knot. And I do recommend you step away from the dogs and actually use the flame knot because the dogs are not that they're not working as intended so far. They're a little bit glitchy. Sometimes you can't even bring them in because it acts like someone's already got them. And after time they don't get many kills. On smaller maps they're amazing, but on large maps you're going to find these dogs get killed from a mile off. They're only one bullet to kill. Uh, so maybe they'll increase the health of the dogs, but um, in a moment it's time you'll see me just slowing down a bit I'm trying to get this last two kills to get the flame knot because you'll see it is a complete game changer I think we're gonna win this game anyway, but it's, it's a guarantee once someone has a juggernaut slash flame knot You can't really argue with that. It's so difficult to kill. I've only killed one juggernaut slash flame knot I keep saying juggernaut. I've only killed one flame knot so far in this game and that was with a direct hit with a uh, Gammon bomb so far the gammon bombs are absolutely pointless um, but I hit someone directly with the Gamma Bomb and it killed him pretty much straight away. So hopefully I can find that clip in my archive and it's been on the screen already. If not, I do apologise. So now we're going to get into the gameplay of the Flame Knot. So this here is increased health. Really, really a lot of health. I don't know so far. Maybe someone in the comments can let me know if health does regain uh, while using this. I don't know if it did with the Juggernaut, but if you can stay out of trouble, you're pretty much going to kill a lot of players. And particularly on this hotel map, which is quite close quarters. Nearly every, nearly every sight line, not outside, but indoors especially, you're going to kill everyone you actually come across. This is a very quick time to kill with flames afterwards. It destroys equipment, it blocks off sight lines, and it scares people. Guns, the weapons in this game, all of them have 10 attachments, or the primaries anyway, so far. 10 attachment slots, as you can see on screen, there's so much customization. This is just the STG. I want to max it out and see what happens to the attachments later on in the game. How does it affect? And I'll be honest, going up against a fully leveled up STG right now is game over. It's pretty much two shots to the head and you're dead straight away at any range. It's pretty crazy. And with the STG alone, there's 390 million combinations of all of these attachments you see on screen added together. That is a lot 
of weapon setup videos coming shortly on the channel, so make sure you're subscribed. The guys over in Katana Gaming, of course, in their Discord are always experimenting with the latest perks and the weapon setups attachments to find that broken setup as soon as possible. And of course, that's exposed on their Twitter, so make sure you follow Join Katana over on Twitter. Anyway, hope you guys are enjoying the beta. This is me chatting over the top of a gameplay where I enjoy myself and I didn't have a mic on properly. Um, so, it is what it is. Some games you do, some games you don't. Hope you have a great day. Enjoy the beta. My name's Gabba. Subscribe for more. You take care.